As I speak with you today, many important issues are still being heard and decided in courts. The Delhi High Court on the issue of whether marital rape should be a criminal offence or not. India is one of the only 32 countries in the world that does not consider marital rape as a criminal offence. The Karnataka High Court will decide if young Muslim women have a right to wear hijab to college or not. And the Supreme Court is intended to review the right of women to enter Shabri Mala Shrine. As more women demand equality and fight for a fair and just society, the courts and law are often forced to evolve. Women are constantly challenging established norms of society and state, asking them to rewrite and reinterpret laws. Today we have a set of laws in the form of legislations and judgments, not as a benevolence of the state, but only because many women have fought for these rights. In 2005, the Hindu Succession Act was amended, giving daughters an equal right in Hindu joint family property or ancestral property. Such an amendment was a long-standing demand of the Hindu women. However, it came to us only in 2005. It was also in 2005 that the Protection of Women from Domestic Violence Act came into existence, giving women the right to reside in their homes, right to compensation, right to uh, monetary relief if they were victims of domestic violence. Till then, there was no legislation stating that the woman had a right to reside in her own home. All these laws are a result of decades of advocacy and movement building from many women's movements and women's groups. The law governing sexual harassment of women at workplace is a result of the struggle that Bhavri Devi undertook several years ago. The 2000, uh, in 2013, post the Delhi uh, rape case, and people from across the country demanding changes in the law. The parliament uh, expanded the definition of rape to include non-peno vaginal intercourse against the consent of women to be raped and defined the meaning of consent. Despite all these changes, we women view the law as something external to us. Despite the seeming progress we've made, violence against women still continues. In fact, it increased during the pandemic and metamorphosized with time and technology. During the pandemic, women were forced to leave uh, workforce in large numbers to shoulder childcare and caregiving and thereby lost access to financial independence. Though, on the other hand, workspace and domestic spaces collapsed into one, leaving the existing systems and law gaping with no real, real solutions uh, to women. Till the Me Too shook the world, not just in India but globally, when we spoke of violence against women, the image of the woman that we, all, we always had in our minds was of a destitute woman as a victim of domestic uh, abuse or grievous sexual assault, far removed from ourselves. This Me Too movement made us realize that each one of us, however privileged, is vulnerable. Violence does not discriminate. It courses through society undeterred by wealth, status, caste or class. However, with awareness of these laws and positive stories in the press highlighting successful young women, we may believe that we are well on our path to real change. But we only need to look a little deeper to see how little we have actually changed in our everyday lives. We are still made to believe that somehow as women we are not whole, not complete. Young confident women, even as they are encouraged to thrive in their workplace, are being groomed through seemingly banal conversations inquiring, have you found someone? We need to find, you, some, find someone for you. It's a collective pressure reinforced by our friends prodding, should I set you up with someone? Many young women today tell me that while they are pursuing their careers, they consider marriage as essential and a necessity. Personally, I've always believed that marriage and patriarchy cannot be decoupled. Of course, we have several decades to go before we can even attempt an honest conversation about marriage. Marriage is an enforcer of gender roles as it is today. We may wish to educate and buy our way out uh, of this, but that's a distant dream. However, a modest beginning 
would be to talk about our life decisions as a range of choices and not just in binaries or necessities. We attempt to raise our daughters to be confident, yet we demonstrate no confidence in their decision making. Equally baffling is seeing young women race towards bigger and better Instagrammable Bollywood weddings. She will be allowed to work. And once she has children and they grow up, she can go back to work. These are serious conversations we have. While planning these uh, dream weddings, very little is a thought, of, a thought is given to the marriage itself. Not just parents, but law too determines who can marry who, how they can marry, which of these marriages are valid. We have to remember that for a right to emanate from uh, the relationship of marriage, then it has to be a legal relationship, validly performed or registered. But even when we think of the law on the, in these occasions, it is only to procure a marriage certificate, as it is required to change the name of the girl from her parental name to her married name, or the new fad of just adding her married name to her parental uh, name. Very few even know that law does not expect a woman to change her name or surname. In organizing these weddings, we also forget the people involved in it. And that seems to be another problem with the institution of marriage itself. It's always the institution that is more important than the individual, and an institution that must be saved at all costs. I see so many women tell me that even prior to the marriage, that there were red flags, or that the husband's family made demands her parents could not fulfill. But everything was planned. A lot of money had been spent. People had been invited. I did not have the courage to say no at that point. But I wish I had. The more money that is spent on these uh, weddings and trousers, the more pressure it is on women and their families to go through with the ceremony. It's just not the wedding um, itself, but even several years after marriage where women are constantly told to make sacrifices, adjust and remain married, whether happy or unhappy, and whether they are CEOs, doctors, teachers or lawyers, as if she were to walk out of this marriage, she would be incomplete again. I still remember an elderly couple coming to me and telling us that their daughter had been murdered by her husband and her family, but the police had recorded it as a suicide. We asked them, that did they have evidence to prove that this was murder. That was when the father told us that there had been several instances of domestic violence and demand for money over several years. The daughter would write to them asking for money. He would give whenever he could. But whenever he couldn't, she would, uh, she would write to him saying that they had abused her and that she feared for her life. He told us that he had saved all these messages as he knew it would be of you someday. A question I never got myself to ask him was when he had a foresight to save these messages, did it never occur to him to save his daughter, to ask her to come back? It is the sense that women are not enough, never whole, never complete by themselves that often forces them to remain in marriages despite the danger to themselves. The premium placed on marriage is so incredibly high that we forget that women are people and not mere custodians of family pride and patriarchal institutions. Even today, the, the woman's right to work, whether as an unmarried woman or as a married woman, is always seen as a privilege given to her, a benevolence either of a parental or marital family, even if it is she who actually sustains the entire family. It is very often that I meet young uh, women in their 20s, just starting off their careers in private companies, multinationals, semi-government, government, government uh, workplaces, who having faced sexual harassment at workplace, do not wish to file a formal complaint. They tell you that they want the issue resolved uh, informally and that their anonymity has to be maintained at all costs. While on many occasions it is the fear of the abuser but even when the employer or the IC assures that there will be no retaliation and, and uh, 
or they will be protected at workplace, women still hesitate to file a complaint. It's when you dig a little deeper and ask them that you often hear that if their families come to know that there was sexual harassment at workplace, whether it is their husbands, fathers or brother, the first thing they will be told is to stop working. And if they are unmarried, their chances of a marriage will be minimized. So they would rather not pursue the complaint than risk losing their right to work, which they believe is a privilege given by their family, or even uh, uh, minimize or hinder their chances of uh, marriage. This is despite sexual harassment at workplace being a civil uh, law as well as a criminal law. And the law stipulating confidentiality as well as that the employer must ensure no retaliation. The letter of the law alone is not sufficient. It is very important for us women to believe that we are complete individuals in ourselves. Citizens entitled to rights including the right to life free from violence. It is only when we believe this, that we deserve a life free from violence, that can we access the law and probably make the law work for us. It is true that uh, women's rights and law is a very complex issue, as gender alone is not the identity that the woman carries. She also belongs to a certain class, caste, sexuality, religion. Our everyday struggles are against patriarchal caste and religious oppression. Law is both, but only a medium that can help us in these struggles. Unless we as women, across caste, class, sexuality and religion, believe for ourselves and for others and for other women that we and they have a right to live the way we and they choose, wear the clothes we choose to wear, study where we want to, work where we want to and love who we want to, law will remain only in the books and ineffective too. Thank you.